So I hope everyone's been doing well since the retreat. Um, I don't know about y'all, but retreat's always such a huge high, and then you come back down the mountain to regular life, and you're like, I'm ready for next year. Um, So that's kind of... When Terry asked me to teach, um, I was actually in the middle of a run, and it was a long run. It was last Friday. She texted me, and I saw it on my watch, and I kind of knew at that point in time that I was going to be talking about endurance tonight. Um, (laughs) It's something we need, you know, especially coming off of a a high of a retreat, and you come. I I remember, like, that first time I experienced that that mountaintop kind of experience, and then you you go into what you would call maybe a valley season or a dry season, whatever you want to call it. You know, we all go through ups and downs in life. You're just kind of like, I didn't sign up for this, but... um, God calls us to endure, so I wanted um, to talk about endurance tonight. So God's word says that we need endurance. Hebrews 10.36 says, For you have need of endurance, so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what is promised. So it doesn't say you may want to work on endurance. It says that you need endurance. Um, And sometimes uh, endurance is translated um, perseverance or steadfastness. So endurance is a necessity. It's something that's absolutely needed. So obviously it's something we need to desire to have in our lives. It's really important. So we know that we need it, but what exactly is endurance? Um, So Miriam Webster, endurance is the ability to withstand hardship or adversity. And then also, because it's translated as perseverance, perseverance is continued effort to do or achieve something despite difficulties, failure, or opposition. And in the Greek, the word literally means to remain under or steadfastness, which is the quality of being dutifully firm and unwavering, especially as God enables the believer to remain or endure under the challenges he allots in life. So just out of those definitions, there's already some words that we're probably not fans of. Hardship, adversity, difficulties, failure, opposition, challenges. Um, Jesus tells us, though, and we all know this, but it's always one of those things you know, but then when you walk through it, you tend to forget it, that we will have trouble in this life. Um, Everyone in this room can attest to that. We've all walked through troubles, through hardships, adversities, difficulties, failure, opposition, and challenges. And one of the things I liked about that word trouble, um, whenever Jesus was like, you will have trouble, I can't remember the exact word, but the meaning implied is that you, you kind of get put where you have no other options. And that makes me so excited because when you have no other options, you are left with your only option you need, and that's Jesus. Um, and that's, you know, that's where he put me in my life to cause me to surrender to him. And, you know, when you think you've got nowhere else to go, that's the best position to be in, and that's why we can consider it pure joy when we face trials. Easier said than done, but when I saw that, that's what that word meant when he said, you will have troubles, like we should be grateful that we have things that we walk through in this life that push us to seek his face. So having endurance is having the ability to withstand these difficulties or the continued effort to do something despite these troubles. And so we develop endurance in this life, living by faith. We are called to endure. It's our calling as believers. And in Hebrews 12, 1 through 2 in my Bible, the little title over that section even says the call to endurance. And it says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. It says, let us run with endurance the race that lies before us. God's word likens our journey in this life to a race. Not everyone might like that analogy, but um, it's a race that we're called to run with endurance. Like a race, there's a start and a finish to our Christian life, and following Jesus takes effort. It doesn't, you know, salvation is free, but following Jesus costs you something. It's some effort involved. It requires discipline, and then at the end, like a race, there's a reward. So why? Why should we endure? Knowing why is important. Um, Simon Sinek wrote a whole book about it. 
I think it's uh, Start With Why. It's a good book just to kind of, and it, it's not a Christian book. It's a secular book just on why. Why do you do the things that you do? And I think it's an important question to ask ourselves in this room. Why? Like, why do we follow Jesus? Why do we come to church? You know, is it because it's something you've always done? Are you riding the coattails of tradition from your parents and stuff like that? Just, it's one of those questions to genuinely, like, ask yourself periodically, why do I follow Jesus? You know, why do you put your faith in him? Because <clears throat> you never know uh, when someone may ask you those very questions, and God's word calls us to be ready, you know, to give an answer for why we have the hope that we do. Um, and that's another message for another day, but I just encourage you in your own life to consider your why. But uh, we can endure or should endure some of the reasons why. Um, and one of the things that should encourage us is because Jesus endured. Jesus did not have an easy life. Um, he endured opposition, loneliness, grief. He was misunderstood. He was falsely accused. He was beat. He was betrayed. He was abandoned by those closest to him. Um, and above all that, he endured the cross. You know, those, that one passage in Isaiah that talks about all the suffering that he had to endure, having his beard plucked and having the wrath of God poured out on him, like all the things that he had to endure. And he was made like us, like humans in every way. So we can, he can relate to us in our struggles and we have that encouragement to endure in this life. And there's been others that have endured before us as well. In that passage, when it says that um, we have before us this cloud of witnesses, it's talking about everyone else mentioned in Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11 is the hall of faith, as a lot of people refer to it as, and it's filled with examples from the Bible of those who have persevered or endured. Um, get to know these heroes of the faith. Um, not only do we have these biblical heroes, but there are countless biographies of real people, just like me and you, that have endured in their life with Christ. Um, some of my favorites are Watchman Nee, Corey Ten Boone, Elizabeth Elliot, um, Billy Graham, just to name a few. And then, of course, we have our hero of faith here in women's ministry, Ms. Terry Broom. <laughs> who's uh, gone before us and... I just hope, like, and I always, you know, I see, I'll get to work with Terry, which just blows my mind. If you'd have told me that six years ago, I'd have been working here at Pursuit. I'm like, that's a lie. Um, <laughs> but, you know, she's just real. She's a woman just like us who's gone through struggles and stuff like that. But to literally have you and your flesh, you know, it's not like we're reading a Bible study written by someone that lives in Texas or something. We have a real life hero here in our midst, and I'm just... So thankful for you, and I hope, I know there's plenty of women here in this room that are thankful for you too. Um, you persevere and you endure to run after God, and it inspires so many people. I don't think we'll ever see the depths and the reach that your life has had, but we all love you, Miss Turi. That's what they called her back home, Turi. <laughs> so I like to call her Turi. Um, another reason we can endure is enduring hardships and suffering is divine discipline. Discipline is good for us, contrary to popular belief. Um, and we, we know that, right? We don't like it. Even the God's word says discipline at the time is not pleasant, but I'm a director of kids ministry, and I know, and I've had real life examples of what undisciplined looks like. So um, <laughs> discipline is a good thing. It's not fun. It's not even, you know, you don't enjoy doing it, especially for kids and stuff like that, but it's, it's necessary. And we are children of God and we have a loving father. God disciplines us for our good so that we may share in his holiness. And like I was saying, no discipline is pleasant at the time, but painful. But later on, it produces a harvest of righteousness and a peace for those who are trained by it. And it's important to be disciplined, just like I was talking about kids, same for us spiritually speaking, um, so that we can grow in our maturity. We don't want to be immature believers our entire life. Uh, James 1, 2 through 4 says, Consider it pure joy, and some translations say consider it all joy. So it's not some joy, it, but we do have to consider it. That means you kind of have to reckon it in your mind. Um, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance. Let endurance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. 
not lacking anything. That's something I want to be able to say. The testing of our faith produces stamina or endurance, and it's a means to reveal the quality of one's faith, to show it approved or genuine. Um, This is what produces maturity, and a tested or approved faith is worth far more than anything else on this planet. 1 Peter 1.7 talks about this. These trials, these hardships, these troubles that we go through, these show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold, though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. So we use fire to purify gold, you know, a metalsmith or whatever. They use the fire to purify gold. Well, to purify our faith, God uses trials. He uses these to distinguish between genuine and superficial faith. And, you know, we think gold's valuable, but far more valuable is is our faith. And it will endure far beyond any gold ever will. And so that's another reason why we should endure. Because there's, you don't want a faith that's not tested. That's not real faith. You know, we live by faith and we do that by stepping out on God's word and what he says. And we're just saying, God, I trust you. I'm going to do what you say, even though I don't feel like it. And that's how you test and try and prove your faith. And it's, it's taken, it's risky, it's scary, but it's worth it. It's far worth more than anything else in this world. So we live by faith to develop endurance. And a couple other things to note about endurance is, um, endurance is not a place that we arrive at. You know, it's not like... Okay, I've endured. I'm good now. Um, it's, it's a lifelong journey. Not only that, but living by faith, while it is something simple, it's simple to say, but it's not always easy. And um, we've covered that a lot with, you know, living by faith, growing in your faith, developing or developing endurance. They all come from going through hard things. You know, it's just a part of life. Um, and just some personal things that I've gone through. I think it was, it might have been that one year ago. No, it was longer than that. It was 2018 or 19, I stood on this stage and I was sharing a story about how God called me to run a half marathon. And at the time, whenever I felt, because that seems like a very absurd thing for God to call someone to do, uh, I agreed with that sentiment. I'm like, that's ridiculous. I just, it was a thought that kept coming up in my mind, If for those of you that might not remember it. Because, I mean, at the time, I was in one of my out-of-shape seasons. I could not even run to the bathroom hardly. Um, <clears throat> but I was at home. I was folding laundry. And this thought of running a half marathon literally kept popping into my mind to the point where I was getting ticked off. I was like, why is this thought coming into my brain? I can't even run a mile right now. And so I just said out loud, I was like, God, if that's from you, you're going to have to make it very clear. You know, famous last words. (laughs) So later that night before I went to bed, I was reading this book called, it wasn't a book on running or anything. It was a book on prayer. It was the circle maker, I think. And I picked it up right where I was reading before And it talked about setting goals, and it said, getting in shape is not a goal, it is a wish. Running a half marathon is a goal, because you'll know you have accomplished it when you cross the finish line. So I kind of was like sitting there reading, and I was like, (laughs) you know, (laughs) I wanted to throw that book across the room. I was like, well, you told me to make it clear, so I did. And, um, but one thing that particular season taught me Just because God called you to do it doesn't mean it's going to be easy. I remember thinking, I'm like, all right, God's called me to run a half marathon. I'm going to do this thing and, you know, go out running. And two minutes in, I'm about to die. (laughs) So it's not going to be easy just because God called you to do it. God calls us to endure. He knows it's not going to be easy. But I think sometimes in our head, you know, you go... You surrender your life to Christ. You get saved and stuff because you, you want that fulfillment of being in Christ. And I don't know if it's the prosperity gospel or what, but something has really tainted what that walk truly looks like because it's not easy. And it says easy, broad, easy is the way that many want to go down and it leads to destruction, but narrow is the way to Jesus and few will find it. So you just really have to kind of consider that whenever you're facing opposition and you just want to run away, like maybe God's wanting to take you through something. 
But so having the calling doesn't make it easier. <clears throat> I still had to put in the work to cross the finish line. I had to start one step at a time, one workout at a time, regardless if I felt like it or not, to build my endurance up to be able to run a half marathon. So it's not always going to be easy. You're not always going to be motivated. Like I wasn't always motivated to go on those training runs, um, but you're, and you're not always going to be motivated to follow after God. It's just the truth. And, you know, you have to kind of humble yourself to admit that sometimes. I think I would get to a place sometimes where I'm like, gosh, I don't even want to get up and read my Bible. And as embarrassing as that might be to get up here and say that, it's just real life. Like, don't beat yourself up because you don't feel like it. You're not always going to feel like it. We're living in these wads of flesh, and we need to just know that sometimes you just have to face the opposition of, of you and, and do what you need to do. Um, it's very interesting, too, because I listen to a lot of audiobooks when I run, and um, I like to listen to things like about habits and stuff like that. And like our habits, you know, you do things so instinctually. Whenever you try to have a new habit or do something new, like your brain's already worn these neural pathways to do that thing that you instinctively do. So whenever you try to do something else, it's like, this isn't easy. What are we doing? This, let's go back the other way. So even your own brain is working against you to establish better habits. So just keep that in mind whenever it feels like it's hard and you don't have any motivation, your brain's trying to tell you, no, we want to do what's easy. Um, that's just how we're designed. So just keep that in mind, because there will be some times where you think like, gosh, do I not even care about following after God? And it's literally you working against yourself. But another thing I learned too, so I, I worked up to it. I trained and ran the half marathon. Another thing I learned is crossing the finish line didn't mean I could let my foot off the gas, you know, I'm like, all right, I've arrived, I did what you told me to do, God, um, and then I just started getting, um, I started slacking off, next thing I knew, I was back in a position where I lost my endurance, and that was on me, it was, I could make excuses, like it was getting cold, but I made the decision to kind of ease back on running, and I lost all of my endurance, and kind of found myself just as out of shape as I would when I, when I started, um, but the same thing goes with our spiritual endurance. You know, you can go to a retreat, you can get a word from a service on Sunday, um, but there's always going to be something that's, you know, coming up in your life. There's always going to be troubles, hardships. You know, once you get through a trial or you think you've overcome a stronghold or something like that in your life, um, that's actually all the more reason to continue to endure. And I've fallen into this trap before where I've thought, I was like, you know, I've conquered something, a certain craving or stronghold, and then all of a sudden, months down the road, I find myself struggling with those thought patterns again. And you just have to, you know, recognize that and be aware of it so you can be prepared to fight against it. Don't, don't slack. Just continue in those disciplines that help you strengthen your faith. And then above all, keep your eyes on Jesus because we're so easily distracted especially now with notifications every five seconds and social media, you know, streaming on demand services, all that stuff. Like it's so easy to get distracted and to get complacent. Um, we've just technology and everything have, you know, we've gotten everything that we want. Um, when you think about hardships and stuff, you just kind of look at the state of our nation. Our nation as a whole hasn't really endured anything like hard. We kind of call the generation that went through the world wars and the Great Depression and stuff as the greatest generation. And we've had as a nation like generations of ease. And we see like the fruit of that now um, with everyone wanting their way and, you know, the lack of discipline and stuff. And I mean, I don't even have to leave my house and I can get... DoorDash, like you pay like triple the price to get food. I was like, I could literally get caught on my 600 pound life if I wanted to, <laughs> just stay at home. Uh, but that goes, um, you know, we get distracted, we can get complacent, so we have to just be mindful of that. But it is life, it happens, just like I kind of fell back into a out of shape season physically, um, you can do the same thing spiritually. Uh, so if you know you've been headed in the wrong direction or avoiding instead of enduring, you can get back on track. Give yourself grace and know that your flesh will oppose you wanting to change, but endure the opposition and watch your faith grow. So that was me with my running. Um, I was out of shape again. So 2020, 2021, I started to get back at it. Um, and by like a year ago, mid-2021, I was like, really brought my endurance back up. My running and paces have improved. I was able to run long distances again. I felt really good. Um, 
I started to slack off in the summertime because it's hot in North Carolina. It's muggy, and I really, really do not like running in the muggy weather. Um, but then last fall, I got sick. I got COVID really bad. Um, and it got into my lungs and stuff, and it basically put me in a position where I was like back at square one with my running endurance. I was like, well, this sucks. Um, even my doctor, my medical provider, she was like, I know you're going to think that you can go back in and do what you did, but you can't. Like, your body's really just been through a lot, um, so you need to be mindful of that because, you know, my lungs were affected, my endurance was affected, I was super fatigued, and um, it was challenging to try to get back into to working out. Um, I had signed up for a 5K last December, and I remember, like, you know, like, because you know, like, where you were, and then I was doing it again, and I would, you know, be taking walk breaks and stuff, and I was just so defeated, like, I would start crying, like, on this race. I'm like, how did it, and it wasn't anything, you know, it wasn't me, like, this time electing just to be lazy. I just had something that happened to me, um, and I was just like, gosh, here I am again, and sometimes we'll find ourselves like that spiritually, um, but I would continue doing intervals and stuff to build my endurance back up. But I kind of wanted a bigger goal to help me build my endurance. So um, this past March, I turned 40, and I decided to buy myself a registration for a full marathon. I don't know. It was a terrible gift idea, but <laughs> I did not tell a soul. And honestly, I know she's in here, Sherry Anderson. Um, when I was watching you do what you did, getting ready for your competition. I knew like that was super hard and it meant something to you. Like it was just above anything else, just you proving like with your condition and stuff that you wanted to do that. And it was you, just seeing you go through that inspired me to sign up for my marathon. Even though like I didn't tell anybody because <laughs> I was too afraid of failing. I was afraid of like, if I make this public, what if I don't do it? What if I end up getting hurt during training? Um, and so I didn't, I didn't tell anybody. I wasn't going to make no post saying, sign up for a marathon. <laughs> but if you guys know, um, I, but I was doing some running, you know, I was getting back into it and somebody I run with a lot is Carrie McBride. And to know Carrie McBride is to love Mar Carrie McBride or to know her might be to be annoyed by her. And she would, <laughs> she would accept that. I love her to death. <clears throat> but we had been doing some running together. And after a couple races, she texted me and she was like, I think we should sign up for a half marathon. And so I told her, I was like, well, I signed up for a full marathon back in March. And this was like around May. And I've literally told no one except for you just now. And so she replies in all caps, shut up. <laughs> and then she had mentioned that she researched doing marathon training plans, but she was too chicken to do it. And then she replied, let's freaking do it. And so uh, back in July, we started an 18 week marathon training plan and it's week 14. Um, we worked up, like when I was running last Friday when Terry texted me, we're in the middle of an 18 mile run, and that was hard. That was super hard. I'm not up here bragging. This is not for the faint of heart. I hope, for your sake, God doesn't call you to do anything like this. <laughs> I've definitely learned a lot. You know, over since July, I've ran over 256 miles, and side note, um, Terry keeps talking about, if you keep running, you're going to lose your belly. I have not lost a single pound <laughs> doing all this running. It's a little frustrating, but God's also let me know you didn't sign up for that marathon to lose weight. You signed up because you wanted to build your endurance back up. And so I've learned a thing or two about enduring. So since my half marathon, um, you know, because I'd lost my endurance back then because of my own neglect, sometimes things happen to us that are beyond our control, like me getting sick. Uh, maybe you've had a spouse that cheated on you or left you. Maybe you've lost a loved one or had a tragedy or a setback happen in your life. You know, water heater goes out. We're used to that at our house. <laughs> my daughter's right here. Oh, my goodness. Some of the things that God just taught us, you know, when you're boiling water for your kids to take a bath, I'm just looking at my son, and they just think it's no big deal. But, you know, sometimes we walk through these things just because it's refining our faith. You know, I don't want an easy life if it means I don't have a life with God. But, you know, things happen. Don't look at your life through the lens of your circumstances. Look at it through the love of your Heavenly Father. Uh, one of the things I remember the most, I did the um, Head to Heart program by Dr. Ekman, and a lot of it has a lot of, you know, inner workings from the becoming what God intended is that, you know, God said you were worth a son. So anything else that you walk through in this life is just kind of incidental. Like, I gave my son for you, you know, 
what else, you know, what else do you need, basically? Anything else that we walk through is just, it's just petty compared to what God has done for us and the freedom that we have in Christ. So we can know that he loves us and we have to learn to trust him and to live by faith in his word. You know, the things that we go through are just part of the territory and living in a sinful world. But whatever has happened in your life or what you've gone through, your loving father has allowed it. And you can lean into him and his word through all the ups and downs. And so then another thing that I've learned is that building endurance takes work and it takes time. Um, I was able to run 18 miles because I've been consistently running for 14 weeks. I haven't made every single training run, but I've done my best to make sure I get every single one. Same thing with building spiritual endurance. It takes work and it takes time. It's discipline. Um, We read our Bibles, we pray, and we do these things. I mean, you might not think about it like that. I think we can get into a a habit of doing things, not really understanding the depth of it, but you're, you're opening. I mean, this is, it's just a book, paper and stuff, but it's the living word of God that we're able to, to just take part in. And then when you go in a room, you close the door or, you know, wherever you are in your car and you pray to a God that you can't see that that's faith. That is your faith being exercised whenever you do those things. Um, And that's how you're building your spiritual endurance. It's discipline, and we endure in these disciplines so we can get to know God and get to know Jesus more. And then the word that they use for discipline in Hebrews, where it talks about this discipline, no discipline seems pleasant at the time. That word actually can also be translated as training. And I like that because for me, it kind of takes some of the pressure off. It's like, we're, we're just in training. You know, a lot of times we put so much pressure on ourselves, especially as new believers or even baby believers. Maybe you're five years old, 10 years old. We're always going to be learning and enduring until the end. Um, I know a friend of mine was just sharing a story about her like 90-some-year-old grandmother who on her deathbed was sharing things that God had shown her that She's like, I felt like I made it so much more about the church than I did Jesus, like all the way to her dying days, like God was still teaching her. He wasn't done with her. And I think that's just an awesome thing that we don't, we don't arrive there on this side of eternity, but we're just, we're in training. We're getting ready for it. We're here on just a vapor of a time. It's just a really speck of time. When you think of God who stands outside of time, the eternal God What's 70 years, you know, even if we're fortunate enough to live that long? 1 Timothy 4, 7 through 8 says, Have nothing to do with godless myths and old wives' tales. Rather, train yourself to be godly. For physical training is of some value, but godliness has value for all things, holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. So training in godliness has value for all things. We need to endure so much more so in our training and godliness than anything else. You don't develop an intimate relationship with God one Sunday service a week, hearing a word through someone else. It's a daily abiding in his word with him through prayer, allowing his spirit to work in you and through you in all the things and allow him to teach and train you and then put these things into practice. Paul writes to the believers in Philippians 4.9. He says, whatever you have learned or received or heard from me, put it into practice. It's just like learning to play an instrument. You're not going to be a professional the first time you blow a flute or whatever. It takes practice. And that word practice in that verse means the active process of performing or accomplishing a deed, implying what is done as a regular practice, a routine or habit. So it takes consistency. You're not going to be perfect. I always like to say practice makes progress, not perfection, because we just want to progress in our walk with God, not be perfect. Jesus was the perfect one, and, you know, our perfection is in him, but as we grow, you know, we're just progressing towards becoming more Christ-like. So developing a life of walking by faith won't always come easy. Like I was saying, endurance isn't going to be something that you always feel like working on. Don't rely on motivation. Develop discipline. Nine nine times out of ten, some days it's like ten days out of ten. I literally, I don't ever feel like going for a run, but I enjoy the benefit of it afterwards. Um, And I know that if I don't get out there and do these runs, whenever my race comes in November, I'm not going to be able to run it well. 
Same thing goes if we endure under those hardships, under those trials, instead of trying to avoid them or, you know, set your life up in a way where you have a life of ease whenever bigger troubles come, which it's just life, it's going to happen. You're going to have a harder time getting through those things. So that's why we just stay consistent in doing those disciplines and just abiding in his word, reading your Bible, praying, getting up early to spend time with him, make your relationship with God a priority. And that stuff, it's not going to come naturally. It's not in us to want that. But through God's spirit working in us, we can get there. And the more that you see the fruit of living by faith, the more that you want it. It's the same thing with running. When I first started out, like, I, I didn't want to do it. And, like, it, it's the workouts were even hard. Like, I just, I'm like, I would, I just rather not have endurance. <laughs> but um, I've just learned so much from getting out there and doing it anyways and just putting it into practice. You know, I have no aspirations to be some, you know, super fast runner. I just enjoy it. To me, it's kind of like therapeutic. It kind of gets my mind clear. And it's, I know it's not for everyone. This is not a thing for you to go sign up for a race or anything. I just want people to run their race well, following after God. And another thing, and I know you guys do this really well in here, is don't go at it alone. Um, there's no way I've been able to get through um, my marathon training so far without a training partner. And we are meant to operate the same way in our spiritual training. Uh, we come in here each week and learn from Terry. You guys, these tables are amazing. You guys have food in here. This is like a table and a half going on right here. It keeps growing. And I just hear the stories from Terry of how well you guys are loving on each other. And it's, it encourages me. Um, and I know I've got some of my tribe members up here. Um, my OG preteen girls, um, and we, we love each other. And we were talking the other day about how what we have is not normal. You know, the fact that there's a room full of women in here that come in here. You guys are excited to come in here and see each other and celebrate each other, encourage one another. That is not of this world. It's a beautiful thing to see because, trust me, I avoided women's ministry for a long time because I thought women were crazy and catty, but... <laughs> We're, we're not like those women in here. Praise, praise the Lord. But we need each other. You guys encourage each other at your tables. We're meant to encourage and spur one another on. This race can be hard, so we'll lift each other up and hold each other accountable. And again, like I was saying, endurance isn't a place that we arrive at this side of eternity. In Philippians 3, 12 through 14, it says... Not that I have already obtained all this or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken a hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Um, you know, I could really kind of like beat myself up on my runs and stuff like that because I'm not running as fast as I used to like five years ago or something like that. And we can fall into patterns like that too with, gosh, I remember it used to be so easy to not hit my snooze button, get up and read my Bible. But it's, you know, we're going to go through different seasons. Sometimes you might have little ones at home that tax your sleep patterns and things like that. So it makes it harder to get up. But just practice that discipline, that endurance, and don't beat yourself up. It's not where your worth comes from. Your worth comes from Jesus, but it's just following after him, developing those disciplines and stuff that help strengthen and develop your faith. So I hope that this encourages you all to press on in your race. We can endure because Jesus has gone before us along with countless others. Developing our endurance is a discipline from a loving father it strengthens our faith, which is the most precious thing we can strengthen. It is the greatest work to believe in Jesus and put our faith in him. It takes time, training, patience. You may have setbacks. You may get discouraged, but that's why Jesus said you will have troubles. But what does he tell us to do? He tells us to take heart because he has overcome the world. He has all authority has been given to him. So there's nothing that you're going through that he's taken aback by. There's nothing that you're struggling with that he's like, gosh, I really wish he wouldn't do that. No, you're perfected in him and we can fix our eyes on him. And we also have each other. He who began a good work in you will carry it to completion. So I'm going to pray. 
Dear Heavenly Father, God, thank you just so much for your call for us to endure. There are so many hard things that we walk through in this life, Lord, but none of them have taken you by surprise, Father God. You know every heartache, every trouble, everything that we've gone through, that we've had opposition, we've had difficulties, Father God, but none of these surprise you. And Jesus, you have gone through everything that we could ever experience in this body, Father God. And I just pray that we would lean on you. We would continue to endure in our faith because there's a lost world watching and they need the hope that we have in you. We love you, Jesus, and we praise you in your name. Amen.